Hello, and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam, and on this channel, I will attempt to describe the science behind the stilling spirits in a more technical way. You can think of it as an introductory college level course. Hopefully, it'll whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self sufficient. So, for this video, I'm going to talk about hydrometers. Let's get started. Hydrometers are, in my opinion, a fundamental tool for making spirits only because. They provide one of the basic pieces of information for troubleshooting any issues might have. But how do they work? What issues can crop up that change the measurements they are showing you? Let's find out. Hydrometers are based on a single fundamental principle that you've probably already learned about in elementary school. That would be Archimedes principle. That's right, a hydrometer is just a boat. It weighs a certain amount, and Archimedes' principle tells us that an object partially floating in a liquid will displace a volume of that liquid equal to the weight of the object. So, this hydrometer will weigh it. Let's see what it weighs. And it wants to roll over. All right. 34.1 grams. All right. This means, regardless of what liquid is in the cylinder, the test cylinder that we'll be using, it will this hydrometer will always displace 34.1 grams worth of liquid. So let's take a look to see why this is. The equation that underlines Archimedes' principle is called the buoyant force equation. And the equation goes as follows. The force of buoyancy equals the density of the solution times the volume of the displaced solution times the force of gravity. So PS or rho S equals density closed solution and it's in kilograms per liter volume of displaced solution And that is in liters. And then the force of gravity, which is going to be 9.81 newtons per kilogram. All right, so using the uh, mass of the, the hydrometer, 34 grams as an example, we'll calculate the downward force due to gravity on the hydrometer. So in kilograms, that's essentially 3.4 kilograms times, I should, yeah, I should write out the formula so you know what it is that I'm doing here. It's force equals mass times the force of gravity. You've probably seen this formula before. It's in, it's probably one of the first ones you learn in any physics class. So yeah, mass times the force of gravity gives us 
0.3335 newtons. So then taking this, we can rearrange the buoyant force formula to calculate for volume. And we get the density of water being one kilogram per liter newtons per kilogram. So we cancel out newtons, newtons, kilograms, kilograms. And we get 0 0.034 liters, which is 34 milliliters. So we know that this hydrometer right here put into water will displace 34 milliliters. Why is this important to know? Well, we know that the mass of the hydrometer is not going to change. And for our purposes, force of gravity is not going to change. That only leaves us with a density. So the more dense a solution is, the less liquid the hydrometer will displace. And so the hydrometer will sit higher in the liquid. For instance, if this was instead two kilograms per liter, this would end up being 17 milliliters. If this was half a kilogram per liter, this would end up being 68 milliliters. So, the more dense the solution is, the less liquid the hydrometer displays, and so the hydrometer will sit higher. And the opposite to that is the less dense the solution is, the more liquid the hydrometer will displace, and so the hydrometer will sit lower in the liquid. So what affects density? Temperature and pressure do. Although realistically, pressure is not going to change enough for it to have any sort of real effect. Temperature, what kind of effect will it have? Well, I'll do that formula again. So we had, and I erased those, 34.1 grams and 0.3335 newtons. And then the final answer was 34 milliliters. So with the same amount of force due to gravity, we have the density of water at pure water of 20 degrees is actually 0 0.9982 kilograms per liter. Times that by force of gravity. And we get 0 0.03406 liters, which is 34.06 milliliters. And that's at 20 degrees Celsius. Now, if we change this to 80 degree water, the density simply changes to 9718 kilograms per liter. So then our final answer becomes 0 0.03498 liters or 34.98 milliliters. And that's at 80 degrees. That's a huge swing in temperature, but it's only a difference of 0.92 milliliters, so less than one milliliter difference. A bigger modifier of density is when you dissolve compounds into that solution. A compound is considered dissolved when it uh, separates from its other, from uh, other of its own molecules and creates bonds with the solvent. So when you pour sugar into water, 
you end up with uh, something like this. So let me add. So this is our glucose molecule. And you have all these oxygens and hydrogens hanging off the sides. So when the water molecule comes in, its oxygen is going to be attracted because of hydrogen bonding, just like in the methanol video I just did. It's going to be attracted because it's slightly negative and this hydrogen is slightly positive. So there's going to be an attraction here. And the same with this one over here. So they'll all be able to compact tightly The water will compact around each sugar molecule. These oxygens will also attract hydrogens as well, like so. And that's why when you mix, say you mixed 100 milliliters of sugar and one liter of water, you wouldn't get 1.1 liter of water. It would be something less would be above one liter, but below 1.1 liters. Same goes for when you're mixing in ethanol, similar bonding process happens. But yeah, any soluble compound you add, ethanol, sugar, starches, proteins, soluble fibers, uh, gases like oxygen and CO2 will change the density of the solution, positive or negative, and cause the hydrometer to rise or sink in your uh, test cylinder. But there are things that will be in there that won't change the density. They're essentially just solids that are floating around in the liquid. Those insoluble solids are merely displacing the liquid like the hydrometer is doing. So if you mix in a milled barley or a milled corn, the, some of the starches, the proteins, and soluble fibers will dissolve into the solution and change the density. But the, the bran or husk of the barley the insoluble fibers, the insoluble cellulose, the, the shell of the corn kernel, some of the starches won't dissolve into the solution and they won't change the density of it. So when you're looking at your test cylinder and you see all these solid particulates floating around in the liquid, you have to know that those solids aren't affecting the density and they aren't going to be changing the reading on your hydrometer. Recalling Archimedes principle, and using an analogy, the density of the lake water doesn't change the more boats you put in the lake. So your boat's not going to float higher and lower in the water in reference to the lake, regardless of how many other boats are in the water. Let's look at a practical example of this. Welcome to the practical portion of this video. For me, I have two graduated cylinders. This one on your left is filled with 260 milliliters of tap water. This one is filled with 260 milliliters of sugar water. The sugar water comes from this beaker. It was filled with 800 milliliters of water and 100 grams of sugar was added. That created a density of 1,048.06 grams per liter and would create about 48 gravity points, i.e. Uh, calculated or I got help calculating this using Wolfram Alpha and the VinoCalc website. So in the uh, theoretical portion of the video we calculated that this 34 gram hydrometer would displace 34 milliliters. Let's find out if that's true. Exactly. Pretty good for a math created by a guy 20, who was born 2300 years ago. Let's try this one now. We calculated that, or I calculated that this would be 48 
uh, gravity point. I also calculated by putting the density into the buoyancy formula that this should only displace 32.44 milliliters. The graduations on here are by two milliliters, so I won't really be able to get that kind of exacting number, but it should be pretty close. So let's see, what does this say? The line is, and you may notice that there's no meniscus forming. That's because uh, water cannot create a hydrogen bond with this plastic here. So the line is showing up right between 292 and 294, which is pretty damn close. And the water, there's a meniscus being formed on this, on the hydrometer, I should say. And that line is at 1.0, just past the 1.045 line. So it's saying there's about 46 gravity points, which is good enough for me. That just goes to show that Parkamedes was a smart guy, came up with his principal 2300, well, probably about 2000, 280 years ago and it still works today all right uh, that's it for this video hope this video wasn't too complicated if you liked the video please click the like button if you want to see more click subscribe click the bell to be notified when new videos are posted and if you want me to create a video on any specific topic leave a comment or send an email and we can discuss it. Have a great week.